200 heart rate sensor to measure the heart rate and we used a neo 6m gps module for uh, gps location of the elderly people the softwares used are arduino ide it is an open source software facilitating code generation and a react native it is a facebook's open source framework for cross platform mobile applications and we have an android studio it is a google's integrated development program uh, for android app development and offering some features like a uh, visual layout and we have an mqtt dashboard app so it is an innovative react active app uh, which is integrated into an android studio providing an interface for mqtt enabled devices control and real life data administration now let's look into the device framework the device actually consists of Arduino Nano and ESP32 working together as a central processing unit. The central processing unit receives power from two power supply distributor boards, and each of the power supply distributor boards get 12 volt power supply. And a buzzer is also connected to the central processing unit. The power supply is provided to the push button by the power supply distributor board one. And when the push button is triggered, it goes up the LED. A DHD 11 temperature sensor is also connected to the central processing unit. You can also see over here MAX30100 pulse rate an oxidation sensor is connected to the central processing unit. MU6050 is also connected to the central processing unit. A GPS module and a piezoelectric sensor is also connected to the central processing unit. And the output of the central processing unit is displayed in the 1.3 inch OLED display. And it is also pushed to the MQTT app, which further publishes the output in the L2D app. Now let's look into the results of implementing the features in this device. Sleepwalk detection. When the heels are not in contact with the piezoelectric sensor, which is placed in the shoe, then sleepwalk is not detected. And this is also reflected in the L2D app. As soon as the heel comes in contact with the piezoelectric sensor, which is placed in the shoe, then the status of the sleepwalk changes from not detected to detected in the elderly app. This helps the caretaker to know whether the elderly person is frequently waking up at the night so he can understand that his sleep is disturbed. The visual alert system is used to alert the people nearby. When the push button is not pressed, the LED doesn't go. And as soon as the elderly person presses the push button, the LED starts glowing and alerts the people nearby. Location detection. The Neo 6 and GPS module, which is present in this device, helps track the location of the elderly person, as shown over here. Body temperature detection. As soon as the DFT 11 temperature sensor comes in contact with the elderly person's skin, then the temperature uh, starts appearing in the elderly app as shown over here. Fault detection. When fault doesn't occur, the elderly application shows fall down status as normal. And when the elderly person falls down, then this will be detected by the MU6050 present in the device. And the status of fall down will be changed to abnormal and an abnormal notification will pop up in the elderly app. Next is the medicine time reminder. The medicine time reminder helps the caretaker to remind the elderly person about the time at which the elderly person has to take his or her medicines. And this is very useful for the caretaker to send the time at which the medicines have to be taken by the elderly just to the elderly app. Heart rate and oxidation detection. This is carried over by the MAX30100 sensor. When the finger is not placed on the sensor, then no values appear in the elderly app. As soon as the finger is placed on the sensor, then the heart rate values and the oxidation values starts appearing in the elderly app. This can be monitored by the caretaker. Now I would like to conclude this presentation by pointing out some important points. This device helps to improve the elderly's health and well-being through remote care. And it is the most cost-effective device to tackle the healthcare challenges that the elderly people would face in an easier way. And more research is needed to make this device a better one. And to rely on its performance, the accuracy of the sensors uh, should be evaluated and more advanced sensors should be used. This device would be a valuable investment for our healthcare and tech sectors. We extend our sincere gratitude to Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology for supporting us throughout this research and development of this device. And these are the papers to which we refer to to come up with this device and do the research. Thank you for providing us this opportunity and thank you and have a nice day. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as far as I know, Mr. Yeswant is also here, right? Yes, ma'am. And yeah, and uh, you, I don't know what's happening with the recorded uh, the last part. It's sound doesn't really quite uh, clear to hear, right? Okay. Or maybe there, there was a problem in recording probably. Uh, maybe I think. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, um, uh, time for the questions. Is there any yes, questions from the audience? Uh, 
you can raise your hand first or you can ask directly. Okay, one uh, quick question from me probably. Uh, your system, is it already uh, applied in uh, some place or something? Uh, no, ma'am, it's not applied yet. Uh, if they will really be applied, what do you think there there are uh, problems or there are things that you need, need to do to think of? Um, ma'am, uh, first, the data collection and distribution has to be taken in concern. Because uh, to we have to implement some uh, stringent uh, data privacy measures and uh, um, in encryption protocols so that the data of the patient is kept safe before implementing this has to be done. So this uh, is not present in the device currently. So that's why uh, we can't implement it. Do you put uh, those reasons as one of the recommendations or the future research yes, or something? Yeah. Okay, okay, that would be good. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other question? Okay, if there is no other question, thank you very much for your presentation and Thanks, answering the question. So, uh, ma'am, I have a doubt. Uh, sorry, ma'am, I just have a doubt. I just have a question. Oh, oh sure, yeah. Um, will there be some kind of uh, participation certificate given or something? Sure, there will be, oh. and there also there will also be the what the, what you call it the kind of competition. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Who will be the best presenter? Okay, who will be the yeah. best paper? And whether one is from uh, the the students or from the researcher, and they will be announced tomorrow uh, afternoon okay, yeah. Indonesian time. Okay, Mimo. thank yeah. you. Okay, yeah. you're welcome. Okay, thank you. Now we can go to the second presenter. Uh, second paper, uh, titled Circuit Force Reinforcement Learning for Interactive Optimization of Circuit Performance. FAMSI Emani. Is there any uh, from FAMSI Emani here? Or probably, yeah, from India. We don't have recorded video from him. Oh, there is one? From him, okay. Now, while we're waiting for the second presenter, we can go through the third one. The third one, paper titled Design and Testing of Data Communication System Integration on RX 450.03 Sounding Rocket. It's written by Kurdianto. Okay, yes, Sir. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, while we're waiting for the second one, you can start your presentation, Mr. Kurdianto. 20 minutes for your presentation include the, the question and answer session. Time is yours. Hello everyone, my name is Kurdianto. Uh, the title of my presentation is Design and Testing of Data Communication System Integration on RX for 150.03 sounding rocket. Introduction. To build the basic payload of a rocket, it is a must to check the payload weight, dimensions, and mission requirements. If the payload is too heavy or large for the rocket, it may need to be redesigned to meet the rocket specification. The RX uh, 450.03 is a single-state solid fuel sounding rocket with an outer diameter of 450 millimeter. The rocket is designed to carry two payloads, consisting of a GPS payload and a rudder payload. Both payloads have the mission of monitoring the motion and positioning of the rocket during its flight. An avionic system consists of accelerometers, gyroscopes, GPS, 
and telemetry system that can be used on board or at a ground center session. The primary goal of the study is to ensure that the rocket plays well and stably without any abnormal motion anomalies during dynamic testing. It is expected that the motion uh, sensor data from the rocket accelerator, zero, and GPS located in the failure function properly and can be transmitted to the drone session wirelessly and effectively. Materials. There are several materials used in the design of the data communication system. Number one, Affinite sensor. In the system, there are two sensors, MPU 9 to 50 sensor and ADXL 70 sensor, 78 sensor. Part F system. In the system, there are two frequency used. Uh, 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. Number three, navigation system. In the system, use GPS 35 XPS. Number four, power system. In the system, there are two battery use. Battery one, 3600 milliampere hour. Use for sensor system and navigation system. Battery two, battery, battery two, uh, for five thousand milliampere hour, use uh, for RF system. Uh, this figure one display the pilot of the material uh, that uh, is inside the tube. The material uh, of the system and RF. Uh, system, uh, GPS, battery, uh, and are equipped with uh, 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz frequency antenna blade. This is antenna blade. Set up experiment. The appearance sensor are connected to GPS and power system follow the GPS data connected to the radio transmitter so that all of the data can be received by the ground control session. Set up experiment about a pandemic sensor. Figure 4, so the outcome of the PCB design for the pandemic sensor. The circuit operates by having a DC input voltage of 7 volts uh, was chosen uh, for the circuit because it provided enough power to operate the process component of the circuit while uh, also ensuring safety. Uh, which flow to a serial data circuit of 4, 5 volt and a sensor circuit connected to a microcontroller circuit of 3 volts. It sensor then output data then has been programmed uh, through a microcontroller circuit and the circuit output is then sent uh, via radio. Set up experiment about RF, RF uh, system. The radio baud rate is set uh, at 38,400 BPS and its maximum power is 1 watt. Set, set up experiment about navigation system. Uh, this GPS 35 XPS has an input of voltage range of 6 volt until 12 volt. Set up experiment about power system. In the system, there are two battery use. Uh, battery one. Uh, 3600 milliampere hour used for sensor system and navigation system, battery to uh, 5000 milliampere hour used for RF system. Uh, figure 9 and 10 is uh, 
all system integrated circuit uh, installed in RX 450.03 rocket plan. Result and this is discussion. Uh, we have for uh, data. Uh, data one is acceleration by accelerometer MPU. Nine to fifty. Data two is acceleration by accelerometer NDXL seventy eight. The burning pass is indicated in the first 17 seconds of flight. At that pass, the acceleration of the rocket saw arise from 1G to 10.5G, which indicated the rocket motor has high thrust power. Two seconds after that, the acceleration dropped to minus 2G, which indicated the rocket motor is burned out. Uh, data 3 is uh, rotational uh, velocity by the gyroscope MPU 9 to 50. At burning pass, the rocket rolls to the right and subsequently roll to the left up to 300 degree per second at 19 seconds. The rocket typically has low pitch and yaw rates. After building up 10, the roll rate slowly uh, decreases at the ascending pass and slowly release uh, at the descending pass. Uh, data 4 is uh, data GPS. Uh, the GPS data received only had a range of uh, 36 point. 25 kilometer in the 66 second. Conclusion: The Ophelix system installed in uh, RX 40, 450.03 rocket underwent dynamic testing during a uh, flight test. The rocket initiated the launch with a maximum acceleration of 9, uh, sorry, of 10.5 g at uh, Seven, seven, 17 seconds and burn out at nine, uh, 19 seconds as indicated by the result of the rocket flight test and in line with the prediction data capture uh, was, incom was incomplete and could not be received uh, entirely by the ground control session this is suspected this is uh, suspected to be due to the antenna being out of alignment with the rocket center of mass. Okay, thank you very much. Bye. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Our is here. Uh, okay, now I give uh, opportunity to the audience who will uh, raise a question to Mr. Kurdianto. Please. Okay. Pak Yudi Aditya. Okay, please. Uh, uh, yeah, you can also. Yeah. Okay, now you can start your question, Mr. Yudi. Okay, thank you very much. Uh... Um, I have a question. Uh, I'm interested in the sensor that you use. You are using sensor, if I'm not mistaken, MP9250. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, um, I mean, this is this is a consumer grade sensor, right? Consumer grade. It's consumer. Uh, is it possible to measure the the acceleration such such acceleration of the um, uh, the rocket? I mean, do you have any problems with uh, with this? I mean, I know because um, usually people from Lapan. I mean, I mean, uh, some of my friends from Lapan they usually 
uh, don't like to use uh, consumer grade. Usually use autom um, um, uh, automotive grade or something like that. I mean, do you have any problems when you use this for measuring the uh, uh, the accelerations of the uh, of the rocket? Uh, okay, thank you. Well, your question. Uh, number one, uh, because it's suitable with the rocket mission, the rocket has accelerated uh, 10G, so that the material using at the XL uh, 78, which has uh, 50G uh, specific. Mm -hmm. For overall analysis and MPU 1940 has uh, XG specification, mm. uh, specification uh, data analysis during burning time. There are no missing that uh, data where rocket uh, flag. Uh, number two, uh, the uh, okay. Uh, there may uh, no there no missing data well rocket uh, flag for me it's uh, a good okay. maybe it is uh, my answer okay thank you thank you are uh, all the questions already answered but you did yes oh, okay Thank you. okay uh any other question from the audience okay if there is no other question then i will we can finish this uh third presentation thank you very much uh for your presentation and uh, for your recorded presentation and the answer of the question. Thank you. Uh, now, yeah. now we can go to the next presenter, which is Pak uh, Yudi Aditya. Oh, okay. So please, the time is yours to share your uh, presentation. Yeah, this okay. But you did, you yes, will, yeah, you will my present me. Yeah. Can I use my own presentation because, uh, okay, let me, <clears throat> yeah, let me say this. Uh, my name is Yudi Aditya Warman. I'm here to present my our paper, Optimum System Design for Performance Monitoring build of Buildings Under Seismic Expansions. Many big buildings, big big cities has many high rise buildings affected by earthquake, which may weaken the structure. Yes. For this reason, a field survey is required, which takes quite a long time to conduct. A structural health monitoring system will faster the process by sending the measured data from sensors for assessment of the buildings after an earthquake. Data from the sensor determine the behavior of the building during an earthquake. For example, strain sensors measure the strain of concrete and force steel. Displacement sensors measure the intensity drift between measure interstory drift between floors. Alternatively, acceleration data can be used to obtain displacement. This paper attempts to address this issue by proposing optimal system appropriate for structural health monitoring in high-rise buildings based on literature. The structural presentation is first instrumentation requirements, which specify data types, magnitude, and sampling rates. Next, we discuss about system design, the architecture and its implementations, simulation and primary result, test results, and the last recommendation. What kind of information that obtained from measurement system? Natural frequency and depth ratios, changes of natural periods or natural frequency indicates changes of building properties. Obtained from measurement, acceleration during weak, moderate, or strike excitation due to earthquake. More shapes. Is a deflection pattern reflected related to a particular natural frequency and represents the relative displacement of a structure for that particular mode. Higher mode shapes can be measured by higher number of distributed sensors in all axes. Floor displacement derived from accelerations by double integration or Kalman filter. Building verticality using measured gravitational acceleration, the change of angle shows the change of verticality of a building. Acceleration amplification at higher floors. 
Higher floor usually amplify acceleration measured by installed sensors on different floors with free ground as reference. Soil structure interactions. The energy transfer mechanism from soils to building during earthquake is important for the structural decline. Determined by correlation between motion of the free sensor, free surface sensor at the ground and the motion at the base of the building. What kind of data required for structural health monitoring? Acceleration, the acceleration from this acceleration we get the, we get the displacement of uh, the, the value of displacement, the smallest significant vibration at the largest possible vibrations, maximum possible acceleration, historical value in the past of twenty five thousand years uh, should be our reference will be our references. <clears throat> For example, the Jakarta area, the maximum acceleration is about zero point seven up to zero point eight g. Whereas the west coast of Sumatra, the acceleration maximum is about 1.5 up to 2.5 g. The minimum envelope acceleration is based on the system use, for example, as low as 0.3 gal for our sensor. Vibration acceleration at the ground surface and at the building due to the seismic ground motion should be measured to obtain displacement. Minimum number of sensors, at least three, ground soil, ground floor, and top floor. Additionally, mid floor, for uh, uh, for buildings with uh, higher than five floors, three orthogonal directions or degree of freedom, such that the measurement of the building can be recorded sufficiently. Ideally, we have six or more six or more modes. The data magnitude and sampling for the uh, structural health monitoring is start and stop recording thresholds. Uh, the MMI or modified mercantile MMI1 correlates the ground acceleration 0.5 GAL. The acceleration durations uh, should measure uh, should measure the uh, magnitude and period of decay mo motion of buildings, which is needed to predict its density characteristic of the building. Additional evaluation period record before earthquake starts and after the building stops shaking. This is for measurement of uh, ambient noise and to ensure that the staking already stopped. Storage duration, uh, which is the duration of the earthquake or source and the building shaking. For example, the Sumatra giant earthquake at the, at the source, uh, the duration is about 500 uh, plus minus uh, 30 seconds. Sampling rate, the largest dominant natural frequency of the building, constant sample rates. A natural frequency, natural frequency approximately one over zero point one times n hertz, where n is the number of the floors. Single story for a single story, um, this natural frequency is about ten hertz, and which uh, which means that we need at least twenty samples per second. Last, we did the uh, synchronized time sampling. Uh, by, uh, this is needed for uh, analyzing the building mode shapes. The architecture is, should be as the fall, the following. Acceleration sensor, resolution and sensitivity to record minimum important acceleration and maximum possible acceleration with response time less than one over sampling rate. Synchronized data acquisition, standardized time value for simultaneous uh, acquisition with correct values and timestamp for further analysis. Controllers which collect, store, and send the data only when there is an earthquake plus time extension as mentioned above. It needs an algorithm in this controller to start and stop storing data that is based on a threshold as mentioned above. Memory to store the data with the minimum size of memory equals to number of sensors times maximum acceleration duration times data storage size. And this should include time windows added before and after shaking and the number of sensors, the degree of freedom. The sensor installed at different levels communicate between sensors and common data loggers, ideally intra-building, and be able to send the data to a gateway or server. Coordinating type equipment gateway coordinates other, other nodes, those locations are based on the mode shape of the building. This fun uh, The function of this gateway includes recording and transmitting data to a monitor center server. The gateway may include algorithm to, de uh, to decide locally whether the building is damaged or not. The implementation, a simple implementation is that uh, a microcontroller in each uh, multiple nodes, there are multiple nodes, each controlled by microcontroller or FPGA or whatever, uh, which communicates, uh, which communicates with other, with other nodes and a server, and they are synchronized by a time synchronizer. Uh, the control, 
each uh, nodes have uh, multiple sensors for um, for measuring the accelerations or as uh, correction by using M IMU, for example, and they're stored in memory. All the system must have external uh, stable source, either it's by using GPS or stable clock source, or remote synchronizations, or external type trigger, in which if the system is implemented by using uh, connections, wire connections. Uh, what, kind of, uh, what kind of corrections needed for acceptable error? For example, if we use uh, uh, RTS, um, um, RTS, for example, DS3231, we, uh, whose uh, internal clock, uh, whose drift is about 2 ppm, assuming that we have maximum of 10% error sam at sampling rate of uh, 20, uh, sampling rate of um, 100 hertz, it requires uh, corrections of every 83.3 minutes. For uh, we need also to implement the threshold uh, start and stop and implement um, RAM circular buffer as well with mark start and stop position with gateway for file storage. The system simulations, system simulations, um, <clears throat> we use motion tracking sensor equipped with a data logger triggered by simultaneously by common switch across loggers to start at the same time. Each logger send the data to a common com to a common system with multiple supports with individual timestamps. The system is um, <clears throat> attached to a soft shaking table um, which is converted to lateral move uh, with the movement converted to a lateral movement. The frequency of lateral movement is controlled by inverter, then measured by LVDT to be compared with the result from the sensors. A tensor story model building was built on the top of the table to simulate the movement of the building. This is the result of our system, uh, the, our, our test system. Uh, this is from the, uh, the acceleration at the table. And this acceleration at the table is converted into um, converted into FFT by using FFT, showing the uh, the frequency of uh, uh, the frequency of the uh, the frequency of the uh, LVDT, and then uh, this is the the measured measured value uh, measured value of the uh, measured value of the system. Um, and this is the the amplitude spec amplitude spectrum of the table accelerations. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, this data, um, unfortunately, the data accelerates shows that uh, the measurement with um, with our sensor, which is a uh, consumer base rate, uh, does not really correlate with the uh, amplitude uh, spectrum of table displacement. We recommend that uh, we we test the different sensors uh, and evaluate evaluate the result with based on L LV, um, LVDT. In conclusion and recommendations that the acceleration center measure fibers and acceleration at ground and buildings due to seismic ground motion. Recorded value should have minimum at least 0 0.03 gal. The maximum acceleration magnitude recorded depends on regional level of seismicity, for example, 0 0.7 to up to 2.3 G. Up to 25 G. Minimum sampling rate of 200 uh, 20 hertz for single story with constant sampling has to have accurate timestamps synchronized for all sensors. Threshold for the system to start and stop recording the data at least 0 0.5 gal. The recording time span is at least 30, from 50 seconds before the set on seconds after the threshold is passed, depending on the building acceleration at the end of earthquake shaking and on the damping ratio. The measured acceleration should cover at least three orthogonal directions. The number of accelerometer in a building is at least four: one at the ground, uh, one at the ground floor, one at the ground soil, one at the mid floor, which is optional, and one at the top floor. Last one: the system timestamp of the sensor should be based on synchronized internal clock system instead of receive time to avoid the different delay effects. Preliminary results indicate that customer grade motion uh, tracking sensor might not be suitable for measuring building vibrations. Should better compare with other sensors, consumer and sensor grade might provide further insight into this result. Due to the amount of possible data streams, the system in a modified sensor should be able to handle data streams from different buildings. Last, ideally, back end of the system is implemented using big data storage to enable multiple seismic event data streams for later use. Thank you very much.
Okay, that was the end of the pre-recorded video. Do you want to add some slides, uh, Pak Yudi, or? Uh, not so far, only some modifications, but we can discuss it later. Okay, <laughs> because I was quite late to check the notes from the other committee that you will add something on that. Okay, uh, is, there a, is there any question from the audience for Mr. Yudi? Not yet. Uh yeah. Me, I'm interested on the system that you've built. You've built. Uh have you have the prototype for it, right? Yeah, okay. And yeah, similar to the first question, uh the, the question for the first um speaker. Uh have you tested the uh, what? Is there any um simulator, earthquake simulator that you can test that uh, equipment? I see mute. Uh, you still mute. Yes, we do. We do have a simulator in the, one of our, our building in the LUK. Oh, oh for the, yeah. <laughs> we need this, okay. um, uh, this to simulate um, 10 stories, building. Mm -hmm. I think this is included in the picture of... Um, I think this is one before the last one, one before the conclusion, probably. Right, uh, page number nine. Page number nine. There. Okay, let me show you the the image here. That's the one. This is the structure that we use for uh, simulation uh, for simulating the um, our sensor. There are uh, almost like uh, ten. <clears throat> Uh, we have ten a structure here. Uh, I mean, for for different uh, different for simulations, mm -hmm. we put a sensor at different locations, and then mm -hmm. this, uh, I mean, uh, the ground here will be will move laterally, left and right and left and right. And we can uh, we can modify this the speed, uh, the speed and the the, uh, the speed and the magnitude as well. Okay. okay. You also have a picture kind of like a 10 storage building or something? Uh, this one. This one of your slide? This one. That one. The one at the back, right? The right. E, 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 C, something? Uh, here. E, 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 E. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this structure. This simulates 10 story building. Oh, that one. Okay. Okay. So we install different locations. Well, I mean, later on, we would like to mm -hmm. try the different uh, buildings, but unfortunately, we cannot predict when the uh, when we can predict. Uh, I mean, the time of uh, earthquake. So <laughs> this is a problem. <laughs> yeah, we we don't we all don't want to have an earthquake actually, but uh, apart, uh, apparently, your system has to be um, tested. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, we can try the building because it always shake all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, uh, Pak Robi, you raise a hand to ask question. Yes. Uh, okay, please. Yes, uh, Pak Adit, uh, so, uh, your system is made, uh, recording all the, the motion uh, in building and hmm. the earthquake. Yes. The question is, uh, does it run all the time or? can trigger uh, when uh, uh, only the earthquake happen. Thank you. Okay, this is, okay. This is one of the... Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let me show you the... Okay, here. Um, let me share the screen. The system has to run all the time. It has to record all the time because we don't know when the uh, when the, the earthquake will start and when it's going to stop. Right, that's one thing. And the second thing is that if we uh, we if we start recording only when the sensor uh, only when we detect a uh, earthquake, and then we don't really know whether previously any. Uh, is there any movement or uh, earthquake happens before we start recording? So 
one of the requirements is that we have to record um, our sensor has to include our data has to include uh, a period before the earthquake start and the period after the earthquake start. Our value from um, our literature show that uh, we need to record at least 30 seconds before and after the earthquake. Right? This is the value here. So our system runs all the time, right? Uh, runs all the time, and then when uh, the earth when an earthquake uh, detected. It start. Uh, I mean, when the earthquake uh, uh, detected, start noting the time, and the, when the shaking mm -hmm. of the earthquake, shaking of the building stops. Right. Um, we noted the time, and then we cut this time, thirty seconds before the earthquake starts, and thirty seconds after the the building stop shaking. And this this uh, this data will be will be. Uh, uh, communicated or will be sent to the get uh, to the server through uh, uh, through our gateway. So the system has to start, uh, has to measure has to record the data all the time. Okay, but how to do it? This is how we implement it. Uh, this is how we recommended the implementation by using circular buffer. Means that because our memory is limited in size, it has to record all the time. But recycling the portion, it is recycling the memory. The content of the memory, so it says uh, it records the record the data in circular motions, something like that. And then when you have the time start, you measure. Uh, you, I mean, you make the notes of the time, and then when the, the earthquake or the shaking stops, you uh, I mean you note at the time, and then cut this this memory and set it to mm -hmm. uh, to our uh, to gateway or to server. That's how we do it. That's what we recommend to do it. Thank you, Padu. Uh, okay, is there any other question? We still have one minute time. Uh, have you patented your, your research, Padu? Yes, we are in the process of patenting this, but I'm not so sure <laughs> because it's not really submitted, but we already presented it in this August conference. I don't know. Have you can... submitted? Have you submitted to? Not to... Yet. Oh, okay, then probably you have to think about part that you want to patent it. Yeah. You still can, uh, 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 you, I think you still can um, patent some of the part of your work, probably. <clears throat> So probably something. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, do, you, do you want to, to comment on that? Uh, no, no. I hope that uh, we can patent it before before this uh, agers is published. Something like that. Apparently, <laughs> you 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 don't have time for that. <laughs> okay. Yes, well, you still can uh, choose which part that, that your 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 research you can you can uh, you want to patent it. You still have. Still able to do that, I think. Thank you. Yeah, you will. Okay, thank you, Pak Yudi, for your presentation and uh, answering all the questions. And again, I will ask any other committee. Is there uh, the second presenter? Is there in the room? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, then we go on to the fifth uh, paper for this afternoon. Uh, titled Design and Implementation of an Integrated Data Processing Unit with Range Match Filtering for Lab Scale Synthetic Aperture Radar Sensor. Mr. Jeffrey Abner, I've seen you here in the room. Yeah, Bapak Jeffrey Abner. Uh, do you want us to play the video? Ladies and gentlemen, friends, yes, please, ma'am. Friends and okay. colleagues, my name is Jeffrey Pombrin. It is an honor for me to stand before you today to present the result of research that has been done by me and my colleagues. The research title is Design and Implementation of an Integrated Data Processing Unit with Range Match Filtering for Lab Scale Synthetic Aperture Radar Sensor. Plan of my presentation. After a brief introduction about the background, earlier work, and research purpose, I will discuss about the SAR system hardware and software, and then the SAR data processing unit.
in the next section i will talk about the implementation of data processing unit and the last one i will show you how the software get tested in the field okay because of its day and night all weather and surface penetration qualities synthetic aperture radar has been widely utilized in disaster monitoring resource exploitation and for environmental exploration and monitoring and crop yield estimation some of these area of interest include imaging algorithm system design and data collecting and processing Starrow data are a series of complex number i and q signals that were recorded in a data acquisition system In earlier work, Brin has developed a lab-scale version of Pulse-Based Linear Frequency Modulated or Pulse LL LFM SAR system consists of three main parts, the transmitter, receiver antennas, an RF subsystem, and a data processing module. The SAR system has two separated steps for its data handling that is the data collecting and the data processing unit this research proposed to create an integrated system of data collecting and data processing for SAR data as one system <clears throat> as you can see in the in figure one this is the star system that has been developed in brain this is the antenna and this is the SAR system. As the data acquisition, we use picoscope. And then picoscope we will, will display the signal read from the SAR system. This is the I and Q signal. Okay. This will show the SAR system hardware and software. This is the SAR system architecture, which includes radio frequency, baseband unit, clock and timing unit. As the software, there is picoscope software. This is the screenshot of the picoscope software that reads the I and Q signals. SAR data processing unit. LabView was selected as the preferred programming language to replace the picoscope original software because it is a graphical programming language with an intuitive user interface and is simple to use. Picoscope as the data acquisition hardware is still used in this research. With the Picoscope built-in software, we can only see the signal by the SAR system without being able to process it. The data processing can be done by taking the stored data and processing it with another program. But with LabView, we can read the SAR data, the SAR raw data, and also process it using the match filter algorithm to create a one-dimensional data. From this system, we can save the raw data and the match filter data together. SAR data processing. Processing raw data generated by SAR device into image is one of the important stages in the research. To produce image, there are two step data processing. First, range processing, and the second is azimuth processing. In this research, data processing will be carried out until the range processing stage, that is match filtering, which then integrated with the data acquisition process. As you can see in figure six, this is the step of data SAR data processing. First is range processing that where the raw data is processed by the frequency domain. And the second is azimuth processing where the range compressed data is processed by complex multipl multiplication in the frequency domain and time domain. Okay, data processing unit implementation. First is data acquisition. 
this process show the data acquisition of two signals generated by the synthetic aperture radar system. This data are the initial part of series of data processing, which will later be displayed in the form of images. Data match filtering. In this part, the raw data that has been saved is automatically processed with a match filtering algorithm, where we can get the one-dimensional data and it, it is also saved on the hard drive. In figure 7, you can see the method proposed or used in lab view. There are two loops. The first one is producer loop and the second one is consumer loop. The, pro the producer loop work as a data acquisition atau the aqu or acquiring the data. The consumer loop function as the save and process data. The data from the consumer loop is the match filter data. In figure 8, you can see the lab view developed for user interface. It show the raw data, the IQ and the I and Q signal, and then also the show the reference signal and the match filter data. In this slide, you can see the difference it in flow diagram between current data handling system and the newly developed system. In the current data handling system, you can see two steps of processing. The first one is to collect the data or the, or to acquisition the data. The second one is to process the data with match filtering algorithm. But with the new developed subsystem, you can collect the data, you can save the, the raw data, also you can process the raw data to match filter and save the match filter data in one process. Software testing. The software test phase mainly focuses on the function of the integration of data acquisition and data processing by using the developed SAR system with data acquisition from Picoscope. The software test is conducted by placing four corner reflector with various size and various distance as an object to detect by the SARS with the SAR system. And in the right side, you can see the uh, synthetic aperture radar data processing system developed with LabVIEW, where we can see the raw data, the I and Q signal, and then the reference signal, and the match filter data all in one system. Conclusion An integrated synthetic aperture radar data acquisition and match filtering processing system has been developed and tested at the Indonesian National Research and Innovation Agency, or BRIN. Some preliminary considerations concerning the focusing methods were established and theoretical analysis of the test biometrical configuration was conducted. There is room for improvement to create a complete, complete single complex system that includes range compression and azimuth compression to create complete SAR images. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. If you have any question or suggestion for the next research, I will be gladly to hear it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Pak Jeffrey, for your pre-recorded uh, video. Uh, uh, do you want to add some points on your video or just uh, answering the questions? Uh, I think I wait for the question. Questions. Okay, uh, audience, it's time for the question session. Uh, is there any question from the audience for Mr. Jeffrey? Uh, you've, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you've changed the system from the old system by the new one and then using uh, what, the software? 
using the new system lab view uh, using lab view and then uh doing similar things like the one before is that the 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 main point of your research am i correct or yes uh with the existing existing system uh mm -hmm. when we do a uh, field testing you record the captured data in mm -hmm. the data acquisition mm -hmm. and then we download it and then we process it with another software uh, mm -hmm. we use the matlab mm -hmm. and then uh, it takes two steps right so we think how about when we do the field testing we can see the one uh, minimal we can see the one dimensional data at least the range of the object we can see right away when we capture the data so that's why uh, we we think we try to integrate the data collecting system and the data processing system into one uh, software and the lab view is uh, you can modify the lab view with uh the integration of the two system uh the the software from uh, picoscope you cannot do that because it is it is all, already integrated in the system of picoscope okay uh my question is then have you ever compared uh your new data acquisition and processing system using like view with the one before that yes. are they yeah is okay. there yes. any uh, we have compared the data captured uh, mm -hmm. when we do the field test with the with the picoscope software and the lab mm -hmm. view yeah. uh, because the picoscope software only captured the raw data we can compare the raw data uh, by the sampling data captured uh, it show the same data captured and when we process it with the one with matlab and the one with uh, the new software it show the same result uh do you have any picture of that oh, and have you uh, calculated is there any error or is no error at all if you uh, i don't have the MATLAB capture data in my in this computer mm -hmm. uh, but if you say error between the MATLAB and the lab view I think it's the same result similar result from from the recorded data it's the same uh, data okay uh, do you I mean do you do you the data do yeah do you do, do the data acquisition and processing in real time or you collect the data and then processes after after that yes if you say real time yeah uh if you capture the data mm -hmm. uh it will instantly show the data right yeah but this is maybe take uh, one or two seconds to show the data after uh, I, we capture the object but it doesn't take you have to download it from the data okay. acquisition and then you process it with another software it's yeah. like it's that. not like that it's not like yes. that okay yes. it's not like uh, okay a delay of a few seconds probably but actually it's a real time right Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So using previous uh, software is also a real time one, and the new one is still real time. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, can you go back to the conclusion slide? Do you have the slide over there? Um, my notes here is. It's about the first conclusion that you've written there. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want me to share the slide? Please. Or just read the uh, yeah, conclusion? Here. 
Yeah, yeah. It's this just yeah. An integrated synthetic aperture radar data question match filtering system has been developed and tested. Uh so you mean tested is in the uh are you testing it in the laboratory scale or is it in the real application? How do you do uh that? it test with the lab scale uh lab scale SAR? And uh -huh. use the corner reflector as the object to reflect the uh, signal, but not in real. If you want to detect something like maybe a car or something like mm -hmm. a moving object, no, mm -hmm. it's still a lab test, but in the oh. field. Oh, it's a prototype, but you test yes. it in the in in and outside the lab. Is that yes. What is, oh, okay, 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 okay. So the system is still a prototype one. Yes. Is it okay? Okay. Yep, that answers my question. Okay. Is there any other question? Okay. If there is no other question, thank you, Mr. Jeffrey, for your presentation and thank answering you, all the questions. Uh. Committee, is there any presenter from the second paper? Still not appears. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the last uh, presentation means uh, we conclude uh, this session uh, after four presentation, uh, after four presentation and all the uh, question and answers uh, session. Okay, thank you very much. I conclude this session. By saying thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Oh yeah, there is a question in the chat. Uh, for the next session will be open at three o'clock, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you.